everyone. Welcome to What's at Stake for Mosa Plastics and COVID-19. Before I give a brief overview of the agenda for this evening's call, I want to give a warm welcome to Pastor Harry Joseph. Pastor Joseph is going to lead us with an opening prayer. Let us pray. I turn to Master here again, your servant. God, we come right now in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God, we come right now to give you thanks for all you have allowed us to do. And God, while we're praying, God, we're asking you for your protection for all you that are leaders. God, we ask for protection from this COVID-19. God, we ask that you will lead us and guide us the way that you have us to go. And God, we ask that you all our steps in your word. And God, we pray, God, that you would direct us and lead us and guide us. And God, we'd be able mindful to give you praise, we give you glory, and we sure know give you honor. We actually in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. That was beautiful. Hi, everyone. My name is Delia with the Center for Biological Diversity. It's so good to be here with you all tonight on this webinar titled What's at Stake for Mosa Plastics and COVID-19. We are going to hear firsthand from community leaders about their fight to stop the Formosa Plastics plant from being built in St. James Parish, Louisiana. You will also hear about the urgency associated with the fight the COVID-19 pan pandemic has brought. This webinar has been a coalition effort. It is co-hosted by a number of organizations, including Rye St. James, Louisiana Bucket Brigade, Center for Biological Diversity, Healthy Gulf, and Sierra Club. Tonight, we will start with an introduction of the problem to give you context. Then we will hear from a number of movement leaders on the issues Formosa presents. Next, we will share with you how we can win in our call to action. So exactly what you can do to support this campaign. The last 10 minutes of this call will be dedicated to questions and answers. We encourage you to ask questions. If we have time, we will get to as many as possible at the end of the presentation. If we can't get to your questions, someone will follow up with you. You can submit your questions by clicking the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen, which is on a visual of that is presented on the slide right now. Unfortunately, if you're using the call in feature on Zoom, you will not be able to submit questions, but we encourage you to reach out with additional questions you may have. We will share contact info at the end of this presentation. Before I give the floor to our amazing speakers tonight, I want to remind you why we are here. Formosa Plastics is a company with a long and dirty track record. Formosa wants to build a massive petrochemical facility along the Mississippi River in St. James Parish. The proposed facility would take fracked gas and turn it into plastic pellets, which will then be used to make throwaway plastic products like bags, utensils, and straws. Formosa's project is part of the plastic industry's plan to steeply increase plastic production over the next decade. Petrochemical companies like Formosa are turning an oversupply of fracked gas in the U.S into plastic for single-use packaging and other throwaway products. This evening, we're so excited to give you an overview of the campaign to stop Formosa, and then you will learn directly how you can get involved. Now I will hand the floor over to Stephanie Cooper, Vice President of Rye St. James, to give a full introduction. Good evening to everyone on this informative and innovative webinar platform entitled, What's at Stake? Formosa Plastic and COVID-19. We will discuss adverse effect in health and wellness, pre-existing conditions, and safety as related to the people in the fifth district versus a combination of Formosa and COVID-19. From this webinar, we, are, we will have heroic participants who will share factual research data that are conclusive in how detrimentally Formosa and COVID-19 correlates and play a deadly and lethal role in the lives of black and brown Americans. These destructive duels will bring high mortality rate to this demographic group. The combination of the two have been linked according to Senator Tom Carper, the top Democrat on the US EPW team, which stands for United States Senate Environmental and Public Work. Brought these concerns and proven facts to Washington, D.C. on May 20th, 2020. He started this, he said and stated that this uncompromised uncom evidence have emerged indicating that adverse outcomes of COVID-19 
or disproportionately experienced by residents of low income and minority communities. These same communities typically experience high exposure of air, water pollution than any other and bear a higher burden of disease due to many factors. For most of highly toxic pollution, dangerous, dangerously continue to lack the respect of human lives. Clean air and water and soil, wildlife, community health, residents, property and access, and last but not least, unethical, inhumane practices of environmental laws and, and litigations. Texas judge addressed them as habitual offenders. If you would like to see or hear more, you can tune into Netflix movie called Point Comfort Dirty Money. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Cooper, Vice President of Rise St. James, member of CADA and local president of St. James Association of Educators. I am the eighth daughter of the first local African-American pioneer, former councilman, Mr. Oliver Cooper Sr. during the 60s through the 20th century. In 2014, a two mile buffer zone protective map was formed but failed to include almost every church and school within the fourth and fifth district to push a political agenda. That is my opinion. During this time, former Councilman Ketchin was in office, voted and deemed most of the areas industrial, not residential. But in 2019, Councilman Clyde Cooper Sr. changed it to residential and some parts commercial. So the area where Formosa wants to build is industrial, thanks to the former councilman, Mr. Ketchin. Just to inform some of you, Formosa, known as the Sunshine Project, there's nothing sunny about it, in my opinion, has the rubber stamp and backing of Governor John Bell Edwards. Months later, on January 23rd, 2019, voting for this super disastrous petrochemical industry, in my opinion, took place that will house 14 plants within them. Councilman Clyde Cooper Sr. knew that the votes were against him six to one. So his God shared with him that since he will be outnumbered, use them for, to get demands for his people and the community. Some political leaders and determined individuals sent word to the councilman to vote for Formosa because he was gonna lose the voting no matter what. Just to share light and truth on the misconception of how and why the councilman voted the way he did. Out of that voting, these are the legal plans and safety precaution, health issues and protection gained for the community, stipulated and agreed by Formosa. Number one, high within the parish, two, beautify the infrastructure at Welcome Park. Three, Formosa must install a 2.5 mile barrier, a tree line, so that the facility is not visible. A fence line on east side to monitor pollution and emission, monitors to measure amount of pollution in the air, pay vocational and technical training for residents in the community and hire them. Seven, health screening for fifth district communities paid for by them. And eight, report emission and pollution within six months. His plan ought to include the people, for the people and the community, based upon the principles of faith, family, and love for the community we call home. Lastly, Rise St. James giveaway during the pandemic. During the Easter week, Rise St. James purchased items to issue to children in the 4th and 5th District. Our president, Sharon Levine, and others felt compelled to send a positive message to our children that even though they were sheltered in, life is precious and can bring untimely changes. So we came to shed some sunlight in those difficult times. So these are the events that Place. Wednesday prayer at home, five friends call and live on Facebook, six rise up and mask up gives away two 250 masks we're giving. Rise St. James and myself for Sony as well. Michael, who has selfishly given our time and miles to commute from New Orleans to tall and small with us. Yes, during the pandemic, but we were mask up, wore gloves, social distance and took precautionary measures to protect the health and welfare and safety of everyone. We also participated in a memorial on Memorial Day to the veterans 
The next break panel is voice you will hear for the next hour of factual synopsis within the pandemic of equality, no transparency, and no equity when it comes to environmental and social issues in the 4th and 5th District. But today, we will target the 5th District topic, what's the say, COVID-19 and Formosa Plastic, two fundamental beasts of fiery deadly venoms and how they relate to causing death and destruction over around and within St. James Parish. Our guest, Collation, Environmental Comrades, you are embarking on a powerful environmental informative journey of truth. Powerful testimonies, combative strategies, rise and gents update donations, scientific data, and continuity in next step. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for that informative overview. Next, we will hear from cartographer Justin Cray for visual background on how we got here in the first place. Hello, everybody. Um, thanks, Celia. Hi, yes, my name is Justin Cray, and I work with the Louisiana Bucket Brigade. I'm an urban planner and a scientist, cartographer. I've been working in issue St. James the past two years um, rather closely, sort of started out mapping pollution incidents. But today we're going to look at exactly what the circumstance, what the situation on the ground is, and why why the situation is so overwhelming for the residents of the fifth. This is a map of St. James Parish uh, you're looking at right now. And this map shows the council district's kind of orange line. Uh, the fourth and fifth are at the left side, upriver of the Mississippi River, which runs through the parish. For those of us who are, those of you who are in the audience who are not in Louisiana, um, this is halfway Baton Rouge and New Orleans. The area where we're looking at in the fourth and fifth district is already dominated by major industry, and which is shown in purple. All these are our existing facilities, and they're listed in the sort of table right hand of the map. Um, so you can reference this uh, maybe afterwards if you're trying to get your bearings on just how much stuff is already in place. This is um, astronomical. I mean, as a lot of this, the science has shown, uh, the level of emissions are already too much for the bear. And on top of that, there's all of these massive facilities which are shown in pink. These are all been proposed since uh, this pivotal 2014 lens plan was adopted by St. James Parish Council. And prior to that, the uh, steering committee, which We'll get a moment. Um, but just to give you an overview, we're talking about Formosa a lot, which is just south of the Sunshine Bridge, right next to Mosaic number two and three. Then we have Welcome. Uh, Welcome is the main community where people live, in, surrounded by this industry. In Jamestown, South Louisiana Methanol facility has yet to be built, but is definitely still in the in the permit process. Expansion of a tank farm, another meth plant. YCI methanol is rapidly under construction by a Chinese conglomerate. Um, in addition to that, St. James has uh, defeated, we'll talk about Wanhua, which you can see in the hashed out red, um, and that's no longer on the table thanks to the organizing efforts of RISE St. James. And then we have other denied permits, just in equity, in blue, over retroplex, which have been denied by St. James Council, which is in the predominantly white half of the parish, um, big surprise. So anyways, let's flip through um, some slides to show how we got here. Why is it that the fourth and fifth districts are being asked to hold, you know, basically bear the burden of all this new development? Um, I'm gonna go through a couple planning things here. This is a, uh, talking about some planning documents. St. James Parish never had a planning framework prior to the 2011 comprehensive planning efforts of the South Central Planning Development Commission listed up here on the top. This map shows a sort of standard planning uh, template where you start with planning exercises, which is a existing list. This was an accurate depiction of mostly the resident, you know, sort of the situation in 2011, where everything in green is agricultural, rural farms, mostly sugarcane, and things in purple are industry. Things in yellow, light yellow, are residents. So flip next to the next slide. 
and you'll see what was proposed. And this is the this was the original proposal in 2011 to see how much is all of a sudden painted purple. The parish at this time already was trying to steer most of the industry into the predominantly black fourth and fifth districts, the, the sort of left half parish. They justified this saying that these areas were declining in population, but I think that if you look at the overall stats, it is a disproportionate impact. There's no question this is an inequitable plan. Step forward one time to the next slide, and you'll see the, the next stage of the inequity was that this plan, which was already unequal, was further, was made worse by a secret committee or, or, or you know, basically the secret meeting it was taken, plan, put on the shelf, disappeared for a couple of years, and then it came back to the planning commission uh, with a revised map, basically converted the entire area shown in the paint square to a residential future industrial zoning designation. And this is not something that you see standard anywhere. I mean, basically zoning was designed to keep residential and industrial separate. In this case, they're being asked to put it right together. And this allowed a major industrial facility, South Louisiana, to come in and get a permit right in the middle of the welcome community. Um, if you want to flip to the next map, we can look at how this transit happened. Um, as Ms. Cooper mentioned, since the zoning has been changed back by uh, Councilman Clyde Cooper to a residential designation, however, uh, the council has not been willing to reconsider the fact they permitted a massive petrochemical facility, South Louisiana methanol, here shown in the red triangle, smack dab in the middle of a residential neighborhood. They're saying it's a grandfather permit and that they're not willing to reconsider it, even though it was basically granted off of this map, which was secretly redrafted from the 2011 draft. I mean, there's really, honestly, if you get into it, some something, some questions that and answers that need to be, uh, the community deserves to know how things got to this point. And personally, in my point of view, this, this whole plan is garbage and needs to be rethought of from the get-go. But that's for another time. Um, I think I've taken up enough time of your, but hopefully it gives you some snapshot as to how we've gotten here via sort of the machinations of local land use planning and some back deep room meetings that definitely are, at, are loading additional plants all into the fourth and fifth district, which is already full. Thank you. Thank you so much, Justin. Now I'm going to share my screen with you so you can all see the Stop Formosa campaign video before you have the opportunity to hear from Sharon Levine herself virtually. It's absolute madness to continue to add more plants in St. James Parish. It goes with that old saying, continuing to do uh, stupid things over and over and expecting a different result. This company, Formosa, does not have a good record for operating in other places like Texas and Vietnam. The Formosa Plastics Corporation is facing over $121,000 in state fines for polluting a tributary of Lavaca Bay. Thousands of demonstrators swarmed the Formosa steel plant in central province of Hadden on Sunday. Taiwan conglomerate Formosa Plastics polluted more than 125 miles of coastline back in April. I've been living in St. James all my life. If Formosa is built in St. James, we are not going to be able to breathe the air and we'll die off one at a time. They have a long, long track record of violating environmental laws. This plant is going to be the biggest polluter in the South. It come in a place that's already polluted. If Formosa moves in here, the property value will decrease. I bet you the CEO of this plant is not going to live here. I don't think it's fair to the small businesses, and I'm a small business in St. James. The 
only thing I regret is I did not try hard enough to keep Formosa out. If I have anything to do with it, it's not coming here. We are going to stop Formosa. To the people who live here, to say, hey, the polluter we're bringing in is going to pollute more than the 12 plants we already have here combined. This is scary. These are our lives. This is our children. It's our future. So we should do something about that. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sharon Levine. I'm the founder and director of Rise St. James, a faith-based Christian organization working to protect the air, water, mm-hmm. and soil of St. James Parish. I'm a retired school teacher of 39 years. I'm the daughter of a civil rights champion. My father fought for and won integration on the west bank of St. James Parish. Now our homes are at risk for being destroyed by petrochemical facilities. My family has lived on this land for four generations. There is a historic free town in this area, and many of the families here are descendants of enslaved people who fought for and won emancipation. And now the petrochemical industry and the state of Louisiana are threatening us. For my talk today, I will focus on Formosa Plastics, a proposed $9.4 billion facility that would emit 13 million tons of greenhouse gases into the air every year. We are threatened by many facilities, including expanding tank farms, and several methanol plants. But today I will focus on how we are blocking Formosa. Our governor announced that a state-wide stay-at-home order would go into effect on Monday, March the 23rd. The order was to begin at 5 p.m. on that day as a major safety precaution to flatten the curve of the COVID-19 pandemic. On that day, as we drove down Highway 18 in St. James and passed the proposed Formosa Plastic site, we had to duck in and out of traffic and wait our turn to pass. But on that Monday, workers were installing utility poles and digging on the proposed Formosa site. Even though there were no Formosa trucks and and nothing with the company's logo, I knew it was Formosa. No police officer were directing traffic, and Formosa didn't even care enough to inform us about what was going on. Formosa spokesperson, Janelle Parks, had the audacity to say that Formosa values the health and safety of our workforce and the residents of St. James Parish. There is something else that made this digging a concern. St. James Parish was under a flood warning because the Mississippi River was dangerously high. Digging within 1,500 feet from the levee is illegal because the river was over 15 feet. Even though I knew it was for most of plastics, I had to prove it. I called our lawyers and others who we worked with, but no one could get confirmation or whether or not it was Formosa. The Army Corps of Engineers told us it was not Formosa. The elected officials in our parish did not know. When our lawyers called Formosa Plastics attorneys in New Orleans, they were told that they'll have to call Taiwan Formosa's headquarters to find out what was going on. No one ever got back to us. On Wednesday, March 25th, two days after the stay-at-home order began, and on the third day of Formosa's construction, I conducted a Facebook live press conference on the proposed site of Formosa Plastics. Three sheriff cars came to the site. Notice that no one had tried to stop the construction, 
but three came from me. I was able to handle the situation because I had known these officers all of their lives. We have lived here in St. James Parish our whole lives, yet residents and public officials were not notified of roadblocks during the biggest public health crisis we have ever seen. Why didn't Formosa Plastic inform the residents, the parish president, the sheriff's office that one of our most important roads would be obstructed for two days? There are so many reasons not to build this plant. Formosa still haven't addressed the multiple confirmed and potential grave sites on its property. Our team has discovered that the graves of our ancestors are on that site. Yes, Formosa's email only reference to them is that they can mm -hmm. get the permits to move them very easily and quickly. We as a community want answers as to why there is a total disrespect for human life, past and present. We stop for most of plastics because, our, because of our vigilance at the grassroots level. We will continue to work with our financial and legal partners to make sure they remain stopped. All of our focus should be on protecting and ensuring one another's health during this pandemic. If this is the way for most of plastics behave when we are fighting for our lives during a crisis, we are more convinced than ever that the company has no place in St. James Parish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharon. Next, we will hear from Milton Cayette on why the St. James community does not want Formosa here. Milton is a Rye St. James member and also the treasurer. My name is Milton Cayette. I am with Rise St. James and Cater. Our community doesn't want Formosa to build in our area. Formosa, what are you going to do for our community? I'm going to pollute your air. Formosa, what are you going to do for our community? I'm going to pollute your water. And this water is the Mississippi River, our canals, bayous, and swamps. Formosa, what are you going to do for, for our community? I'm going to pollute your hand. Formosa, Formosa, what are you going to do for our community? I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to allow you to visit my grave sites on my property, the grave sites of former slaves. Formosa, what are you really going to do for our community? I'm going to keep on polluting. For, for, for these reasons, we do not want Formosa to come and build their plant in St. James Parish, District 5. Thank you. Thank you, Milton. Next up, we have Gail Buff, another powerful Rye St. James leader. Oh, Gail, I need, you need to unmute yourself. Um, not yet. What about now? Yes, okay. you're in. Bonsoir. I'm Gail LaBeouf with Rise St. James and League for a Better St. James Parish and Cato. This is revenue we never get. I grew up along the banks of the Mississippi River in St. James Parish, 4th District, but now resides in 1st District. I've watched the plants in our parish grow in numbers on both the East and West Bank. On the borderline of St. John the Baptist and St. James Parish, the first industrial plant opened in 1957 and the Veterans Memorial Bridge opened 28 years later in 1985. On the borderline of St. James and Ascension Parish, the second plant was opened in 1967, and the hourly wage was welcome. Along with the opening of the Sunshine Bridge in 1964, 
Also, two highways partially opened in 1970. LA 3125 Highway on the East Bank that joined both bridges with stretching 13.78 miles. And LA 3127 Highway connecting Sunshine Bridge with LA 70 Junction for 42.1 miles to Bouti, Louisiana on the West Bank. Over 60 years, these plants have been promoted as locally needed jobs and revenue, when actually we have to share the jobs with others in our state and around the country. In 2019, St. James Parish government reported revenue from the industries were just over a million dollars. We have 14 plants operating on the East Bank and 10 is in the 4th District, Convent, Louisiana. In the 5th District, there is nine plants operating, three proposed and one under construction. It is undeniably clear that these conglomerate billion dollar earning entities and their revenue is not invested in 4th District. Come, take a scenic ride along LA 44 and LA 18 Highway in St. Jane Parish. Allow your eyes to take in the beauty and wonders of nature and pray with all your might for the souls of men that legislate the demise of people in their historical community. Long ago, lobbyists for the oil and gas industry have gotten politicians to enact incentives like ITEP tax exemption, with, which makes it very lucrative for their bottom line. The lobbyists have only to whisper in the ear of the me, myself, and I people of St. Jane Parish, and they come up with a land usage plan that is basically a permit to let industry in and disenfranchise 4th and 5th District. More industry is to our detriment. And we certainly do not need FG Sunshine Project, which is another name for Formosa, raining down more particulate matter of 2.5 while COVID-19 is already ravishing us. The state of Louisiana could use the revenue to improve our rank of 50th for quality of life and 43rd of fiscal stability. For a number of decades, these industrial plants have been a plague on St. Jane Parish residents, and this has been done by design, not by happenstance. Most of all, this has been done for profit, pure greed. Need I say more? Need I say more? Bonsoir, Hail LeBuff. Thank you, Gail. Next, we have Kim Terrell, the Community Outreach Director at Tulane Environmental Law Clinic. Kim will give us an overview about air pollution and the associated health risks within the context of the ongo ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the connections to Formosa. Thanks, Delia. Um, can you all hear and see me okay? Thumbs up? Okay. Um, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here tonight to talk about these important issues at the request of Rise St. James. Um, and I'm, I'm going to just jump right in. Um, and so if we look at a map of COVID-19 death rates per capita, which means normalized to population across Louisiana, we can see pretty clearly that the impacts of COVID-19 are not evenly distributed. We've seen throughout Cancer Alley remarkably high death rates um, from this very serious disease. And so if we look specifically at which parishes have the highest death rates in Louisiana, you can go to the next slide, Delia. Um, of the top 10 parishes, seven of those are within Cancer Alley. And of the remaining three, two of them are located adjacent to Cancer Alley parishes. 
So what's really important to recognize is that not only are these death rates higher, they're substantially higher than what's typical for Louisiana. So if we compare these numbers to the median or the middle value for the state, we can see that Cancer Alley parishes have a COVID-19 death rate that's between three and five times the median for the state. So significantly above average. And when we go back to our map of COVID-19 death rates across Louisiana, um, we did an analysis uh, at Tulane Environmental Law Clinic where we looked at what are the different factors that might be associated with this pattern of COVID-19 death rates across Louisiana. And so we looked at things like smoking, diabetes, obesity, poverty, the proportion of seniors in the population, race, and pollution burden. And we looked at what of those things might be associated with these differences among parishes in COVID-19 death rates. And if we move forward, we see that of all of those things, the only two that are associated with COVID-19 death rates across parishes are the percentage of Black Americans in the parish and the pollution burden. And for anyone who's interested in, in diving more deeply um, into the methods of this. I have a link where we have a full copy of the study at the bottom of this slide. And you can also follow up with me directly by email or through the organizers of this uh, webinar. Um, and then if we continue to move forward and look at the things that we might expect um, to also be associated with COVID-19, we can see that while age and diabetes and poverty are likely risk factors, they don't explain the differences in parish level death rates um, for COVID-19. They don't explain this geographic pattern. So what would Formosa bring to this equation? If we look at the pollutants that Formosa would be permitted to release, we see that it includes over 300 tons per year of fine particulate matter, which has been linked to increased COVID-19 death rates through an analysis that was recently published by Harvard University's School of Public Health. But it's important to remember that all pollutants essentially impact the health of your lungs. Your lungs are ground zero for the impacts of air pollution on your body. And we know that people who have damaged lungs are more susceptible to COVID-19. So it's no surprise that we find this relationship between air pollution and COVID-19 deaths. And it's also about a lot more than COVID-19. These pollutants that, that Formosa are permitted to release are associated with many other respiratory problems like asthma and COPD. So to wrap up, if we look at where the state is monitoring air quality in Louisiana, we see that there's this huge information gap within Cancer Alley, including St. James Parish and including the site around Formosa Plastics. And in fact, DEQ doesn't have any monitors for PM 2.5 within 10 miles of the Formosa Plastics site. And I think there's a typo in my slide, it should say 10 miles. Um, and again, PM 2.5 is one of many pollutants that Formosa would release on top of everything else that's in the parish. So to summarize, what we know is that Black Americans are overburdened in Louisiana with COVID-19 and with pollution, and that the emissions that would be released by Formosa if it's allowed to build would only make the situation worse. Thank you. Thank you, Kim, for that excellent presentation. We will now hear from Barbara Washington on what Rye St. James has accomplished together. Can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Barbara Washington. I'm a member of Rye St. James and CADA Coalition Against Death Alley. I reside in the Ford District on the east bank of the mighty Mississippi River. And I live in St. James Parish in Convent, Louisiana. I live one mile from 
Louisiana Highway 3214. And that is where Wanwa Chemical had proposed to construct their $1.25 billion plastic facility. On Friday, November the 16th, 2018, Governor John Bell Edwards announced that Wanwa Chemical, a Chinese-owned plant, would build in St. James Parish in Convent, Louisiana. The Parish Planning Commissioner voted to give Wanwa their land use permit five to three. But wait, wait. The residents of St. Jan Parish came together to protest against it. And with God's help and the concerted effort of Cater and the president of Rise St. James, along with its founder, Sharon Levine, this is what we accomplished so far as a coalition. First, we started attending planning and council meetings informing ourselves as to what was going on. We gained knowledge. Second, we attended and marched to the state capitol and the governor's mansion to inform him of our grievances. Next, we obtained signatures from uh, many, many residents petitioning Wanwa in St. Jane Parish. We formed town hall meetings to inform the residents of what was going on. We wrote letters to the editors and along with the quick legal strategies of Tulane Law Clinic and our attorneys, we were able to sue the parish council in violation of Louisiana open meeting law. The Tulane Law Clinic gathered enough information about what was left out of Wanwa's application. The pressure and litigation slowed Wanwa's approval. And on July 24, 2019, the council referred Wanwa's land use application back to the Planning Commission for further review. And on September 6, 2019, Wanwa pulled its land use application. But they, our parish officials and others told us it was a done deal. But as a coalition, we defeated Wanwa. It was hard work, but we stayed focused. And with God's help, we claimed victory. We did it before, and we can do it again in defeating Formosa, because together, we win. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Barbara. As you heard from the number of panelists so far, Formosa would impact every district in St. James. In the last decade, Decade, cancer risk from industrial pollution in St. James Parish has increased by 800%. Formosa's emissions would double the toxic emissions present in St. James air. Pastor Joseph is going to come back on and talk about how Formosa will impact every district in St. James and why for this reason, it's so important to pressure our local elected officials. Good afternoon. Pastor Joseph, Pastor Mount Zion Baptist Church, our pastor right in the middle of St. James, which is called Chapman Town, where we already have plants on the right and right, plants on the left. And my task this evening is to talk about what we have already done and how we have been ignored by our own leaders and our councilmen uh, that are from 1st District all the way to the 7th District. And 
we have been into our council meetings over and over and over again saying no. And they put your plugs in the air because they ignore when we say no because they still say yes. Yeah. So <clears throat> our task is that we are the people. And what I've learned since I've been in this fight that we're always fighting and people sit at home saying we're doing a good job. But I encourage our community to get more involved because when you are together and when you speak out more, uh, we can tell our councilman no and they would have to be no because they would not ignore us because they see few numbers. And when we got big numbers, they got a way of closing doors on us. And I think that that's a law should be changed because people need to, the councilman need to hear the people's voice. And our voices have been loud and clear saying that we don't want no more plants. We don't want nothing else in the 5th District and the 4th District because of the people that live here that have worked all their lives. And they tell us that it's going to be jobs. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. But in the meantime, the job is not for the people in St. James. They are for the people that are out of our state. Because when you walk around and look at people, people are working from out of Mississippi, all over the world. You can see their license plates when you're coming in. And our fight started back in 2013 with the Bayou Bridge Pipeline. We said no to that, and our councilman voted it in. We said no to uh, the plants that is being built right now, YCI, and they voted it yeah. We said no to Louisiana Methanol, and they are still trying to come in. We have already said no to Formosa, and our councilman have said yeah. But we need to just stay focused and continue to trust God because God, will not leave us nor will he forsake us. And I trust God that God, that the ballot is not ours. It is the Lord's. And I encourage all the organizations that have been fighting with us, all the organizations that have been there with us, and I just want to tell our councilmen that they need to start listening to what the people are saying because we voted them in to be our voice, and they need to be our voice. If we say no, you vote no because what you have done to our community, you have destroyed it in so many ways because – when you ride down Highway 18, which people that lived there all their lives, they had stores. They had all kind of different things. Now you can't find no more than one store on Highway 18. And when you cross over on the other side of the river into Lutches and all, it all look beautiful with the wind dixes and all. But I want to let the other councilmen know that we might be suffering it all right now, but when they're going to hit your grandchildren, when they're going to hit your children, what would you vote then? Will you vote yeah or will you vote no? Will you protect yourself like you protect us by saying, yeah, because of a dollar or whatever you may be taking. I don't know what they're taking on the table, but they are taking something because they are saying, yeah, and we are saying no. So for Mosa, we're saying no because we ask for clean air, we ask for clean water, we ask for clean soil. And that's the things we don't have. We can't go gardens. We cannot, uh, our water, we have a smell in the morning when you turn it on, and definitely our clean air. When we go on outside, we and with the COVID-19, we were in masses, but now that we are wearing masses, I feel that Formosa and all the other plants that are in this parish have not stepped up to say that we are here to protect the people. Nobody brought us masses. Nobody did nothing for us. And I feel that it is time that we let them know that they are here. And the ones that are here, they should be more protected of us. They should be able to give us what we need because they are making not just pennies, but they are making dollars. And I feel that none of them have protected us since we've been here. So our councilmen should be looking at what is really going on with the plants that are here and the plants that are coming. If the plants that are here not doing nothing, why you figure the ones that are going to come are going to do so much? And my prayer is that God continue to protect us and continue to let us fight the fight that God has given us. And I want to encourage all the encourage. I want to encourage all the leaders, all all uh, the groups that are fighting, that we have to just trust in the law with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct our path. God bless you and God keep you as my prayer. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. So we are now at the most exciting part, which is where you can learn how you can get involved. Um, we will now tell you about a really exciting opportunity to take action immediately. It's easy and important, and you can do it today. Firstly, if you're a St. James resident, we ask that you call your parish council member. The St. James Parish Council has the power to stop Formosa. This is why we are asking everyone from St. James to call your council member, council member and voice your concerns. In the follow-up email you will receive after this call, there will be a link to a landing page with a short call script, which you are welcome to use. We've also put the numbers of each district's council member on this slide that you're looking at right now. 
It is important when you call to urge them to rescind the land use permit for the Formosa project. But that isn't the only way to help support this campaign. We are asking everyone else, Louisiana residents and non-Louisiana residents, to sign this petition to the governor of Louisiana, John Bell Edwards. We are demanding Governor Edwards use his gubernatorial power to stop the project from moving forward. Governor Edwards can direct the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality to revoke Formosa's air permit. Our goal for this petition is 10,000 signatures, so we need your help to meet our goal. Once we reach the goal of 10,000 signatures, we plan to deliver this petition in person to the governor in the Capitol and Baton Rouge. When we do reach that goal and plan to deliver the 10,000 signatures in person, we will of course practice safe social distancing delivery methods. We will also include a link to the petition in the follow-up email you receive after this call, and we would appreciate if you would share it with all of your friends and family. Thank you to all of our wonderful speakers this evening. It has been so inspiring to learn from each of you why the need to stop Formosa from building a plastic plant in St. James is more urgent now than ever. And thank you all to our wonderful webinar viewers and listeners for being here with us to learn more about this campaign firsthand from leaders of the fight. I am now going to transition into our question and answer section. We've kept track of questions as they've come up in the Q&A function and if you have more questions, now is the time to add them to the box. I'm going to read off some of the questions we've received and direct them at the appropriate panelists. Let's see. The first question is for Ms. Sharon. Ms. Sharon, how can we get residents on both sides of the river to care about Formosa plastics? Plastic will Oh. oh, I just unmuted you. Most, Go for it. Okay. For most of plastics will affect the whole parish, but mostly the fourth and fifth district. If you would like to help join with Rise St. James, we have our numbers, our email information on the website. You can contact me or any of the members of Rise St. James. Come to our meetings, get involved, participate in marches, uh, letters to the editor speaking to the parish council and the land use commission people. And uh, we, we, we usually give updates like uh, live streams and you can follow up with the updates and you can also ask to speak to me or any of the members of Rise St. James and join forces with us. Let's see. We have another question. Um, who are Rye St. James' strongest elected political allies? Anyone from Rice can speak up. What's the question? I'll repeat it. Who are Rye St. James' strongest elected political allies? <coughs> the Louisiana Bucket Brigade, uh, Sierra Club, CADA. Well, CADA involves a whole lot of a whole lot of organizations. So CADA, I would say CADA. Sharon, I think the question was no. That elected. Okay. Yes. I can't hear. Yes. You. I think you're talking about. Uh, elected officials. Right. Yes. Oh, elected yes. officials. Yeah. What? What? You know, what's the how question again? What, what, it's okay. Allies. Uh, you did answer allies, was, but the the person was asking about elected officials who have been supportive of the campaign. Oh, who were supportive of the campaign? No, what allies, elected officials. Allies that can help with. Uh, what's going on with Formosa. Um, just like I said earlier in the introduction, uh, the sad thing about it is that Councilman Clyde Cooper is by himself. You understand? Seven to zero. And um, I think uh, Pastor Harry had an opportunity to talk with 
other council member for them to get on board with Councilman Clyde Cooper as to what's going on. And, and, and I think our president also has tried to talk and all the members too have tried to talk with the uh, representative from other uh, district as well. Uh, others lead to uh, no avail at all. Uh, some led to no phone calls back at all. Um, and some just say, well, I'm, I, I'm not going to piggyback off of that. I'm just going to say uh, yes to Formosa for whatever reason they decide. So when you say ally, that's a tough question to me, uh, being the councilman's uh, sister. Uh, he's by himself, and, and maybe you all can um, write letters to the other board members. I think you have the phone numbers of the other council members and kind of pressure them and let them know that it does not take one uh, council member to say no or yes or have to do quid pro quo, one hand wash it the other, to get Formosa in and to try to do for the community as well. So I, I think that talking with the uh, senator and the congressman, um, Mr. Ken Brass and Ed Price as well, uh, let them know about what's going on, that we do need some powerful allies that can <clears throat> talk for the people and see exactly what's going on and what are the things that we entail. So that's very important. So any other members want to add on what I just said? Yeah, I think that we as a people, some kind of way, uh, with the councilman, uh, our own councilman, Clyde Cooper, we need to get with him and see if we can come to a meeting and try to get the other councilman to come to his meeting where he can build a base that with the councilmen that are in the district closest to the 5th district, which is the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th district, because those councilmen, if he, build, if he can build a base with those four councilmen, then he might can, you know, we can start winning some ballots, but we got to build a base. And uh, that's one thing we can talk to Clyde about is to see if we can build a base and try to get these other councilmen to uh, join in with us because we're all going to be suffering on this side of the river, especially on this side in the fourth district. That can be a base because we can have the five, the sixth, the fourth, and the fifth district, and then we can dominate the, the rest of the council because if the other three vote no because you're on the other side of the river and if we can get these four on this side to vote yeah we can dominate everything that's come through St. James we we can dominate it but we'd have to get with them to build a face and they would all have to be in agreement that they all should agree on one thing at all times and that when the fifth when the first second and third want something let them have it and when we want something they would have to give it the fifth the fifth and the sixth district and the fourth district would have to automatic give it to us because we all are working together. So that's the base would have to be built. And how how we do that, uh, we have to talk to our councilman and see if we want to see if you want to do this. That we can sit down and build a base with the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh district. That when they need something, they all can agreement. And then the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth, and the seventh district can always be nominated. We can always get what we want. And just to add to that, it's very important to know too that some of those councilmen are worked in the industries, you know, which is hard or have family members that work in the industry. So they don't want to touch uh, issues like that. That's the sad thing about it. So yeah, building that base is very important, but then you have to look at the true picture too, that there are some who in the industry and support industries all because of you know, they can, they work themselves and they can get family members in that instant lottery money when it comes to industry. So we did, we definitely need to put some other jobs out there too, but what else jobs out there, especially what's going on with the pandemic now, you know, to let them know that that isn't just sanctity in working in the industry. What are the side effects? What are the advantages? The disadvantages outweigh the advantages of working in the industry when you really look at it. When you really painstakingly look at it, weighing out the advantages and disadvantages and the pros and the cons. There was one question I want to give to Gail um, before we kick it back over to Pastor Joseph for the closing prayer. And um, any questions that we didn't get to answer tonight, unfortunately, um, we will get an emailed response to you. So thank you so much. Um, Miss Gail, someone asked, what should our parish be focusing on and investing in if not for petrochemical plants? Uh, 
Haynes gave us some masks. Haynes stopped producing T-shirts to make masks for the United States of America. We should be trying to get a plant such as Haynes, maybe even Ford Motor Company, move part of its business here. We have this beautiful Mississippi River that they can also use to import and export their goods. So we have any number of industries that we, other than petrochemical plants, that we can invite to come here. But the state of Louisiana have to be on board with it. And if you really observe how it's set up, they're, they're set up for oil and gas industry and for nothing else more. Thank you so much, Gail. Pastor Joseph, would you like to lead, lead us in a closing prayer? And on the screen, you can now see um, Rye St. James email. If you want to get more involved, you're welcome to email them at ryesaintjames at gmail.com. Please like Rye St. James on Facebook. And you can also visit the www.stopformosa.org website for additional information. You ready? I think we're ready. All right. I tell them after here's again your servant God. We come to God. We thank you for this meeting. We thank you for all those that have spoken out, God. And we pray, God, that somebody had heard our voice, God. We pray that you would just intervene right now, God, that you would touch hearts, God, that you would change minds, God. And we know that you can do all things, God. We rely that your word has taught us that we can do all things through Christ. That strengthen us, God. And we're gonna put our strength. My strength is in you. No that with you, God, and nothing is possible. Everything is possible with you, God. And I pray, God, that you touch our leaders, God, and I hope that they listen to what has been said and what has gone on, and that you change their hearts, God, and let them realize that we are your people, God, and the earth is the God, and the goodness thereof, God, and we know that you have not come to destroy because you come to fulfill that which was already there, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely evening. Okay. Uh, I'll say bye. Bye. You can bye. all unmute yourselves and say bye. 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 God bless everyone. You too. Bye. Thank you very Thank much you. for tuning in. Bonsoir. Good job, everyone. So delighted. It was so awesome.